design. Welcome to Make and Take Tuesday. This is a little weekly series where I share a new paper collection, a new product, a new tool, a new design, and we have fun making something crafty and beautiful. For the last two years, I've shared a monthly series uh, doing like little desk folios. I did it with authentic paper, then I did it again with graphic 45 time to flourish. And we also did a little monthly folio with photo play year with my nomies. And when we finished those out at the end of 2022, y'all were really sad and you said, please, please come up with a new one. So I had to do a lot of thinking and a lot of searching. Um, I am doing a through the year memory project with the Button Farm Club, and that's really beautiful using Life Captured. You can check that out. I'll put a link in the box below. But this is just a simple project that we can kind of make together every month, and it's a free tutorial. So Graphic 45 came out with their flower market collection, and I fell in love with it right away. I love flowers. I love botanicals. I love Graphic 45. So I purchased it. And when it came, I'm not going to lie to you, I was stumped because um, I got the 12 by 12 and I got the 8 by 8 and it is gorgeous, but this is what you get. You get this sheet and the back of this sheet is the print and that is it. Um, I did make an additional purchase of the 12 by 12 patterns and solids, which helps somewhat but I did find this really challenging to wrap my brain around. So I thought and I thought. So I went ahead, I got the die cut ephemera bits. I got the journal cards and I got the chipboard. So I have the whole shebang bang here. Um, and I've had to really think about it. And I finally came up, but I want you to see, it really is gorgeous. So each month features a different flower and the meaning of the flower, what the flower stands for. Um, beautiful colors, they're a little faded. So I also had to work around that, um, like real pastel-y, um, which I like pastels, but sometimes they're hard to work with. So, but beautiful, beautiful. And um, I'm really tickled with what I came up with. And I hope you will be too. This is what we're going to be making together each month this year. See, just pretty. Um, I love flowers. And then December, of course, is poinsettias. So let me show you what I came up with and you can tell me what you think and if you wanna go ahead and make these. I know this looks different from what I normally do because where's the ribbon, where's the flowers? I didn't do that. I kept this real simple. This is a stand up eight and a half by eight and a half desk folio and you can use this as a planner you can use this um, for all sorts of things but you can see on the cover i've just stitched together the patterned papers here are some of those 12 by 12 patterns and solids here's the chipboard um, lots of fussy cutting and then some little sequins just simple and beautiful the fun thing is the design of this folio I don't want to brag on myself, but I kind of think this one rocks. I hope you think so too. So it opens like this. And on the top, we've got a little flap page. Now you're going, where did that come from? That is not flower market. That is cottage life. I had to go looking through my stash for patterned papers that work with this collection in order to do any kind of a folio. So, we're good. That's going to be kind of fun, I think, to mix and match. The base will always be the Graphic 45 Flower Market, but then each month we'll have like a guest star that comes in. And this month it's Cottage Life. I also pulled out my Graphic 45 dies and die cut frames and butterflies. I stitched a little lace along the edge here. And this opens out. Here's some of those beautiful fussy cuts, some of the die cut ephemera, a little photo mat, and I used my die to cut this file folder and turned it into a pocket. This has the January calendar in it, so you can jot down dates. You can use these for lists or you can put photos here. So you can kind of just document your month with this. So this folds back in and then that brings us to this panel. And I took one of the three by four ephemera cards, turned it into a pocket 
added a little scrap with a little butterfly trim on it here. Again, this can be a list, this can be photos, this can be a quote for the month, like a, this can be your goals for the month. You can use it however you want. This sweet little tag. And then I die cut one of these fun little string tie envelopes. You could put stamps in here. You could put little mementos in here. Fussy cut border, another little butterfly. This flips out. Then we have a photo mat page here. And um, the nice thing about this size folio is you can put fairly large photos here and you can actually journal over here. And then this side is a little side pocket. Again, here's the um, cottage life papers. And you can see how I've lined this out. We made a little six by six folio with the image from the eight by eight and that tucks in here. So this can be, you know, whatever you want it to be. Um, then this flips out and over here, I've got another little flap page. This is the back side of that beautiful journaling card. The title is from Cottage Life. This opens up. We've got a little pocket in here with another little either photo mat or there's room on the back too. You can make lists, you can do whatever. And then I did a little, one of my little, this is three images from Cottage Life. That goes in the pocket. And then I just took this little scrap of the pretty designer paper, matted it on the blue and made a little tag. So that goes there. And then here is another, this is cut out with the dies. And I put another little photo in here. Here's a little tag, again, cut out from a scrap. Little scrap here is a border, one of the postage stamps. This little scrap of the designer paper. This is very bold, intense pattern. So I find taking it in small doses worked best for me. Another postage stamp up here, and of course you can put your photo there. And then in the center, I made a little bookmark. Um, so that goes in there. And then this pocket, I was thinking you can use for receipts. And this is an accordion pocket. So it, so it expands, which is nice. And then I made a little note card just with some scraps of printer paper and um, another ephemera card and more of this. And I just tied this little twine around it. It's nothing fancy. It's literally just printer paper that I've, um, here, I'll open it up and show you. See? So I just put glue, I, I cut them all the same size, stacked them together, put glue along the top. And then this is a little notepad for whatever, grocery lists, to-do lists, inspirational thoughts, crafty ideas, keeping track of projects, whatever. So I love, I still love to write things on paper. And I almost always write with pencil. Um, I think it gives me permission to change my mind. So this is the folio. This does have a magnetic flap right here. And then this closes down. So this will stand up on your desk. It's really pretty and cheerful to look at. And by the time we get done, um, we'll probably finish up in November um, you'll have all 12. So these make great gifts. These are fun, you know, to dress up your studio or your office or your kitchen. That's what we're making. So today I'm going to show you how to build the base. We won't be able to build the January one together because I used all the January papers. Um, but we'll build the February one together. And I think you can probably look at the photos, um, and figure out how to do this. All right, so let me clear some space on my desk and we will get to work. So here are those February papers, violets, pansies, so beautiful, I love them. Violets stand for being faithful. Um, so this is the cut apart page. And this is the pattern page for the eight by eight. And then I also have the cut apart and the pattern. I mean, for the 12 by 12, I also have the cut apart and the pattern for the eight by eight. I have these two ephemera cards, which are just stunning. And then I have from the 12 by 12 patterns and solids, all of the purpley colors. So I'm gonna try to only use one of each 
Um, but we'll see how that goes. And then for my cardstock base, I pulled out this Stampin' Up. This is Blackberry Bliss. I thought this was a really good contrast. This, These pastel papers, in my opinion, need something deep and bold to ground them, to anchor them, because otherwise your projects just feel like they're kind of floating, floating away. Um, from the ephemera, die cut ephemera, I have this little wee frame and this little wee image. And from the chipboard sheet, I have this little tag. So who's our guest star? I had to do some searching through my stash, but I remembered that I have Heartfelt Creations Burst of Spring, which is pansies. And it has the yellow butterflies. So I thought this is a pretty good match. And I brought these in. I probably won't use this side of it here. I'll probably stick just to this textured here because this green does not go with the green in this collection. And the same thing here, I'll probably use, you know, the portions that don't have too much of that bright green. But very pretty, I love this pattern. So this is gonna help break up all that strong, bold pattern. And I think it's gonna end up looking really, really good. So that's what I have there. Now, to get started, let me move stuff out of the way. You're going to need all together six eight and a half by 11 sheets of this Blackberry. All right, this is a big folio. It takes, it takes quite a bit. So take this eight and a half by 11, put score tape on the eight and a half end, And just use that score tape as a guide to help you line your papers up. And that looks good, y'all. So I'm gonna go ahead and burnish that down. So these two pieces are the top and the bottom. All right, and we're going to go ahead and score these out at four and a quarter and four and a half. Then we're going to fold this on that four and a half, and we're going to score at, and I want to make sure I'm lined up straight here. eight and a half and eight and three quarters all right so this becomes when we fold this you can see this becomes the top and bottom of our folio just like that now you're going to cut two eight and a half by eight and a quarter pieces of your blackberry. And you're going to score this one on the right at eight, and then again at seven and three quarters. Come in with your score tape put score tape right along that edge just like we always do okay and you're going to fold this in and in And this piece is going to attach right here. So I'm gonna take my score tape off. I'm gonna lay my paper down because I wanna be centered. And 
then burnish that down right there. So this is the flap page on the left, okay? Then this flap page on the left, you're going to score at one half, and then you're going to score at three quarters. And this piece is going to go on the right. Put your score tape along that half inch line. Try to stay in frame, but I'm also trying to keep that other side out of my way so I can see what I'm doing. All right, so we're gonna line this up pretty good. Not quite. So basically what I'm doing is I'm lining that half inch score line up with the edge of my folio. So see now we have this flap, we have this flap, whoops, <laughs> we have this flap and we have this flap and there's our little portfolio. Not hard, right? You can do that. The next thing I want to do is cut up this um, 12 by 12. So I'm just going to show you how I go at it. I bring in my precision trimmer and I'm lining up just above the scallop and I'm cutting. So and I have this nice long border piece. I'm gonna go ahead and come up here and take off the branding strip. We won't be using that. Okay. Now I'm gonna trim around this is going to be our cover image. So I'm cutting maybe a sixteenth of an inch um, into the white, into the cream that's there. On that, I'm going to go ahead and take off this border strip on the top. So now we have this, and I actually trim off this little metal bracket, but save the little scrap because sometimes. This little piece on the back can make a really sweet little border somewhere. So this is what you end up with, all right? I'm gonna get around my calendar and I'm going just beyond the little
Now we're going to fussy cut around this little floral border. And when you fussy cut, if you struggle with fussy cutting, it just takes a little practice. You actually move the paper, but you hold your scissors still. So you think of your paper as being the steering wheel on a car. And you just drive the paper through your blades. And I'm doing a fairly loose fussy cut. I'm not doing like razor precision. It's going to look really pretty when we add it as the border to a page. But it's good to go ahead and get these elements cut up because then you know that you have them and you didn't accidentally cut into them. These are um, stamp scissors. I've had these forever. Fiskars makes these. I'm not sure if they still have them. Uh, Joanne used to carry them. I'm just going to cut out these two postage stamp images. Just going to trim around this little border. This is a one and a half inch scallop punch. And I did the two. And then this one I'm just going to cut around with my scissor. And then just fussy cut around this one. And I'm going to bring my precision cutter back in to finish off this tag and little, um, And I'm going to do the same thing on one of my 8x8s. So trim out your 8x8 pattern. Cut out an 8 and 3 8 by 8 and 3 8 of the botanical. And what we're going to do, I'm going to stitch mine. 
Now, if you don't want to stitch, you don't have to, but because this, um, I just think it adds a lot and it also helps the papers to stand out. So what I do when I stitch so that I have every, can keep everything um, even and straight is I put a little bit of adhesive in the center panel and then I press that into place. And then of course I'm stitching around the perimeter so it won't gum up my machine, right? Then the next thing we wanna do is we wanna take our large image from the 12 by 12. And this is trimmed out to five and five eighths by six and five eighths. So I've got a five and three quarter by six and three quarter of the purple that has the butterflies on the back. It doesn't really matter, but, um, okay. So this is gonna be centered here, like this. Then up at the top, I've matted my little February calendar And I'm going to set this back behind so that the days of the week and that little purple line show. So just like that. So this is where we're at right now, okay? And then, um, oops, I had two of these, okay. So I had a little scrap of this stripe. This is five and three quarter inches. And one of them is going to go right here. So that about, it's just, a, it's just about three eighths of an inch that's showing. And then the other one Oops, I did that wrong. So this is what we've got. So I'm going to put adhesive on my center panel and along this part of my calendar. And then I'm going to place it where I want it to be on my folio. So I'm equal from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here. And now I'm gonna go stitch. And when I stitch, I'm gonna go around this inside image and I'm gonna go around this outside edge. All right, and I'm probably gonna use some sort of a contrasting thread. I gotta look and see what I've got. But let me go do that and I'll be right back. All right, here we are all stitched up. You can see I used a uh, variegated purple thread. And then because we don't have a large chipboard to go here, we're gonna take this Humility label and I've matted it on our Blackberry Bliss and put foam tape on the back. And this is going to go Oops. straight is always good, right there, okay? And then up here in this corner, I've got our um, little faithful label. This is cut from the eight by eight. go just like that 
and I've got our little two button that we want to put down. It occurred to me these would be super cute as a gardener's journal and you could keep track of what seeds you're starting and what you're going to grow. You could sketch out your garden plot um, and then just keep track of tasks that you need to do in the garden. But the only thing I'm going to do is add a few sequins scattered around, but this is pretty much done. I think I'm happy with that. I'm liking these simple because it's such a busy pattern I feel like the design needs to be simple so there's the cover set this aside and we will move on Before we go on I went ahead and added another score line in between the quarter inch score line here and what I want to do is just pinch this together see I'm just putting a valley in between the two outside folds and forcing that to pinch up like this and it just seems to work better all right this is heavy cardstock so it's um resistant but you get the idea. Now we're going to go to work on this top inside panel. And from my Heartfelt Creations paper, I cut this eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter inch piece. And then from another sheet, I cut this six and a half by eight and a quarter and scored a half inch flap on the right. And this is going to go on the top. And I'm just going to line my eight and a quarter inch square up, All right? So that's going to get glued down. Now find your large postage stamps. And this little purple piece. I want to put this down as a border. And then I prepared this little tag. And I'll show you what I did. I covered the back because um, otherwise the middle section would fall out. I'm just gluing this down up at the top. All right, and then I went digging through my stash. Well, actually, let's go ahead and finish this up. So I've got our two February stamps, and I'm gonna go ahead and do them vertical, even though I know they're supposed to go horizontal. I like them vertical, and we can do that. So this one goes here. And I went digging around through my closet and I actually found some Prima Darcel that I think will work for this. I just don't want it to be monotonous with the same pattern over and over and over and over again. So I like to change it up a little bit. And this little strip that we cut out of the 8x8. Eight eight. And this is one of those Darcel butterflies. So 
So that's kind of fun. We've got our little love tag up at the top. All right, so over here from the Darcel um, 12 by 12, I have this wherever you go, go with all your heart. I'm just gonna put this right here. And if you don't have these collections, you know, look in your stash. I know that you will find something that you can use. So then on our flap page, I went into Darcel and I used the um, file folder die, file folder and sentiments. This is a graphic 45. And I cut out a file folder from Darcel because I thought this was a really good color match for this purple. So I'm going to take this border piece. Actually, let's flip it to this side. I think I like that better. And then put an adhesive on the back. So this typewriter goes right in there. And then make today count. And let's put this right here in the corner. teeny tiny butterfly right there okay so that is that this is a page from Darcel six by six it's a great spot to just put a photo in there so we're going to glue this down and then I've got this little piece from the ephemera pack Tuck it back behind. And then this is also from the ephemera pack. Isn't it neat how all these work together? I think this was the year that purple was the, they didn't call it purple, of course, but it was purple, it was the color of the year. That... There we go. I might come back and turn this into a little booklet to slip in there. We'll see. All right, so that finishes that. Mm -hmm.